I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my workbook series, The Knowledge, will help you make changes like you've never made before. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're gonna to be talking about, I ended it and I regret being stubborn. Mm. Now this is a lot more common than you'd think. Yeah, absolutely. And when somebody's broken up with you, you don't feel like they regret their decision. You don't think that they're thinking about things. You feel like they've just moved on and they're done and over it. Exactly. But that doesn't happen. Uh, now, of course, it happens sometimes, but a lot of times, once you back off and leave your ex alone, that's when their position changes, mm -hmm. right? That they go from, you know, no, I'll never give this another chance, to thinking about things, and then they can start to regret their decision. Exactly, because the more you do challenge somebody on their decision, likely a decision that they've thought about for some time, then the more entrenched they're going to be in it, the more stuck they're going to be in it. And it's really a reach for their own autonomy. They want to assert themselves, say, I know what's best for me right now. And it's also partly ego. Yeah. That they don't want to say that they're wrong or go back on their decision because that requires a level of humility. And nobody wants to be pressured. I mean, think about when somebody tries to pressure you to buy something, mm -hmm. when that happens, you often are like, no, 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 I'm not interested. But you know, if the if you were going to buy a car and they and they try to pressure you, you're like, no, no, I'm just looking, I'm just looking. But if you if the guy just says, look, uh, if you're interested, let me know. I've got other people interested in this car. It's okay. Now you're gonna be like, ooh, now I don't know if I want to let this car go because I do like it. Mm -hmm. But the taking off the pressure that the salesman does makes you really think, maybe I should get this car. And it does make you more curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've got a good email coaching today from a guy in his early 40s. He was with a woman in her early 30s. Neither have any kids. And they worked together for about three years. Uh, he says they, quote unquote, talked for a year and a half and dated for a year. So when he says talked, I'm guessing it was like a friends with benefits type of situation. That is what it sounds like. And it's curious to me as to why it was for a year and a half, because that does seem like quite a long time before a relationship really kicks off. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, they do work in the medical field, and he said, I ended things. So here you're seeing this is from a dumper, everybody. I know you guys wonder what the dumper goes through, so you're going to see from his perspective. He says, I ended things at one month due to her storming out after verbalizing, I don't do well with clingy. Mm. All right, so he said to her, I don't do well with clingy. She stormed out. He, br he ended it. He goes on to say, she thought I meant affectionate. I realize now that I am more avoidant and she's more anxious. After this, things were good for seven months. But I introduced her to my inner circle and invited her to my family functions and outings, but only met her cousin the week before the breakup. All right, so it sounds like maybe he was frustrated that he wasn't meeting her friends and family, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounded like a lot of things and a lot of unspoken frustration. Yeah, that's what I was picking up on too. Also, the word clingy, there's a level of shame that comes to it. Mm -hmm. It does take vulnerability to express your emotional needs and what you want out of a relationship and even being affectionate. Mm -hmm. And so for her to be in this place where she is loving, showing a bit of her colors to him, and then him to call her clingy as if that's a, like a negative thing, it definitely has a negative connotation. Yeah, it seems dismissive. Yeah, yeah. I agree. All right. He said, I did bring this up with her, but got excuses. Okay, so you wonder, was there something going on there mm -hmm. that she was hiding him? Mm -hmm. Or maybe she's not close with her family, so she does, or maybe her, she was afraid her family would mess things up. 
I mean, it's hard to say. At this point, it's been about seven or eight months, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. And so it's still fairly early on, but at this point you would think that, you know, you'd be able to meet some family members, be somewhat integrated into your partner's life. So but, I understand his frustration. Yeah, and they had been talking for a year and a half, mm -hmm. I think in front of this, right? Mm -hmm. So if that there was that year and a half in front of this, seven months, then it would be even more frustrating. Right, because it feels like much longer, and it really is. Yeah. You know, there's really no labels that you can put on the emotion of attachment. Yeah. He says, I believed we're, we were being more secretive than private due to work. She would talk about leaving to different cities, and nowhere was I included in her plans. Mm. Okay, so it sounds like he's a little worried she's going to abandon him here, huh? Mm-hmm. And I also love that he included the distinction between secretive and private. So there's many times where you have to keep a situation private because yeah. of things like work. Maybe your family is super religious. Maybe it's private just because it's something newer and you're discovering what you want. Yeah. And then there's secretive where nobody can know about this. And, you know, I, I don't want people to know because then something bad will happen. Yeah, they're having an affair. They're secretly married. Right. So it's like that. Maybe that's what he was kind of wondering if something mm -hmm. like that was going on. Right. Mm -hmm. I did feel I loved her way before she told me. And I think that also made me pull away. All right. That's interesting. Mm. I never told her until after the breakup but thought I showed her. I stopped making the effort, stopped inviting her to come over, and instead allowed her to make the formal dates. Well, that's interesting. He kind of contradicts himself there, doesn't he? Because mm -hmm. he just said, I never told her. I mean, I think that's meaning that he loved her. I don't think mm -hmm. he said, I told her that I loved her until after the breakup. But I thought I showed her, right? He says, I thought I showed her, but then look at what he says. I stopped making the effort, stopped inviting her to come over, and instead allowed her to make the dates. So that's the exact opposite of showing right. her. Uh, okay, that's, I wonder if there was more to that. Yeah. And I also wonder if he did use that word clingy towards her, it makes me think about what he thinks about his own emotional state and how much emotion he can show. So I wonder if he does yeah. have something to where he's like, well, I can't show too much emotion. I can't be clingy. I don't want to be clingy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially about... since he's the man. And in our society, we tell men that you have to be strong and emotionless and stoic. And so I wonder if he had these types of ideals inside of him that were affecting his relationship and were affecting him from even telling her that he loved her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because uh, it does sound like he was pretty insecure about how this was going. Mm -hmm. And there's... There's something really sad about a regret of not telling somebody that you loved them. Yeah. Yeah. Out of tough. fear. Yeah. And then when you tell them, a lot of times they feel like, well, it's too late. You mm -hmm. had your chance. Right. You know, you could have told me and you didn't. Mm hmm I instead told her the door to my house was always open. She could come anytime she wanted. But I see she needed me to actually invite her to make her feel wanted. And I agree with that. Mm -hmm. You do have to invite people. It's nice to hear, yeah, you're always welcome to come over, mm -hmm. but that's very different than, I want to see you. When are you free this week? When can you come over? Mm -hmm. That feels very different. Right. And putting the pieces together to bring up this clingy comment once again, I'm wondering if in her head she's thinking, well, if I do come over whenever I want, am I going to be labeled as clingy again? Am I going to be overwhelming for him? Yeah, that may have like traumatized her. Mm -hmm. She told me this multiple times. She finally did tell me in a picture that she loved me and I did not respond correctly due to fear and frustration as fights were being picked. I believe just for the sake of fighting. Hmm. I don't know. I, I feel like maybe there was something deeper going on and that's why they were picking on each other. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Once again, you do see that fear of sharing how much love you have for her yeah. and telling her about it. And I wonder if that fear is rooted in some childhood experiences and experiences with your caregiver, mm -hmm. where if you were to show any type of affection or emotion that you would be shamed for it. I wonder if it could come from that or if it could be used against you. You might be thinking, if I let myself be vulnerable with this person, then they're going to have a lot of ammunition against me, yep. which really is a destructive way of thinking because you don't get to reap all the benefits of a healthy relationship with that type of thinking. Yeah. All right, let's go on here. He says, I believed I just needed her to talk to me and tell me what the problem was. 
but she would always say, I'll tell you later. Maybe she was just afraid of making it worse. And she's like, I'm enjoying right now, so I don't want to talk about it right now. We'll talk about it later. Mm -hmm. I realize now she was frustrated at where things were and with me in general. She would ask if I was in this for the long term, which I did see her and still do for marriage. The weekly fighting after what I believed to be a good day began to eat at me, and so I ended things abruptly. Mm. Okay, so even though he's got strong feelings with her and felt like he could marry her, it was just bothering him so much that he was like, I, I, I gotta end this. Mm. Right? Sounds kind of impulsive. Yeah, I agree. It was very emotional, and I thought we would talk it out twice when she said, let's talk. But both times was just begging to not end things, so I stayed stubborn. Mm. All right, here we have it, right? He ended the relationship, she was begging, and so he stayed stubborn. Yeah. That's big. We tell you this all the time, guys. Here you have another avoidant confirming what we say. Mm -hmm. uh, had she not begged and said, okay, if you want to talk, call me. Mm -hmm. I think they would have been talking a lot sooner. Right. And you also have to think about what that does emotionally to a person. You know, when the person does get to the place where they are begging and pleading mm -hmm. and showing all of that, that, that in itself can be really traumatic and destructive. You know, I can think back to the times where I was begging and pleading in my own relationships and thinking back, you know, those were really painful times. Yeah. And so it, it does make it much harder to repair things once it gets to that point. Yeah, the whole dynamic just shifts. Yeah. But you can see, guys, right here, a dumper saying it. What happened when she backed off and left him alone? Well, here we're going to hear it. About a month and a half later, I realized I made a mistake and we talked. She said it wasn't something she sees for her future and finally opened up. So at this point, she got frustrated and said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. At the t You see, that's, timing is so crucial with things. Mm -hmm. We talked about some of the issues, but she was set. Now see, now she's set. Mm -hmm. He was set before. He changed his mind. Now she's set in her decision. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's going to beg, right? Mm. She left and said she thought she was making a mistake prior to giving me a full-on kiss, not just a peck. Okay, so she, I guess she felt like she was about to be vulnerable and decided, no, I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I lost it and spent two weeks begging and pleading. Mm. It's tough because when she was begging and pleading, you stayed stubborn, mm -hmm. and now you're begging and pleading. What yeah. do you think is going to happen? Right? Finally telling her I loved her, always wanted marriage with her, and asked her to move in. So that's kind of like a grand gesture. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And then a lot of times people get angry at you when you say that and do that. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, now? Now? Now you want to be with me? Now you want to marry me? Exactly. You had every chance in the world. You didn't want it. Now I break up with you. Now you want those things? Mm. If you want to see anger. <laughs> I remember the first time I heard this many years ago with somebody that I knew. And I was like, wow, this is interesting. Uh, and it always stood out to me. And now I, once you pick up on something like that, mm -hmm. it kind of stays with you, mm -hmm. how that works. And the dynamic right now is all based around fear. Mm -hmm. uh, it sounded like he was afraid to be vulnerable, yep. lashed out at her. She was afraid to be vulnerable back. And now, even with the breakup, once he broke up with her, then he was fearful of restarting the relationship. Months later, now he's fearful of losing her, and now she's afraid of restarting this relationship. Yep. So a lot of healing to be done. It's tough. All right, he says, in early August, we met again, more calm, and I explained, I realized why I did what I did. Same results. Yeah, explaining why you were begging is not going to really still change your mm -hmm. mind. I, I, I would have told you that. Yeah. And the biggest piece here is empathy. And I see this a lot where a partner does realize all the mistakes and they want to apologize. And the apology is literally just them justifying their behavior. Yep. Or, you know, let's say you do have a deeper understanding and you can say, okay, well, I was triggered by this. 
Ultimately, what you want to express is empathy. I realize that I hurt you. You must have felt blank. Mm -hmm. That is key to making somebody feel heard, listened to, understood, to really tell them that you know where they have been. Absolutely. And we have that as a big focal point, particularly in the creative healing course mm -hmm. in that, I think it was section 10. Mm -hmm. We go into that a lot. Yeah. And in the workbooks too, but in the course we went into it even more because uh, it is critical. She says she still loves me and thinks we can work things out, but can't because she believes we'll end up in the same place. Mm. And unless you really work through your issues, uh, I agree with her. I do agree with her because the communication has been poor. Um, you guys have really struggled to be vulnerable with each other. And, you know, based on how they were interacting with each other, it just seems like it would go right back to that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And a lot of the issues in this relationship weren't superficial. I want to make that clear <clears throat> because it does sound like, okay, yes, there was fighting, there was conflict, but really the issue is comfortability with intimacy. How much can you hold space for your partner for her to be vulnerable and emotional? Mm -hmm. And can you bring that out of yourself? Are you able to be emotional and vulnerable with your partner? Mm -hmm. And these are issues that honestly take a long time to work through. It's definitely possible. And it would be great if you could work through that with your partner. Uh, but these are big issues, not small ones. Yep. In other words, you would likely to be go back to the same dynamic and unless you really work through stuff together. Mm -hmm. Okay. She says she still thinks she is making a mistake. I've been working on myself and realize my flaws. Well, you're probably making some progress, but you know, there's probably a lot more work to be done mm -hmm. and people don't want to hear that. Right. It's been two weeks. I'm different. Yeah. I've changed. Yeah. No, you haven't. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's great that you're reaching that awareness because awareness really is that first part. And then it's understanding where do these things come from? As Margaret says all of the time, nothing comes to the here out of the nowhere. And so there always is a root cause to something and exploring that is really where we're going to see a lot of change happen. Absolutely. He says, everyone says, move on. Am I holding on to hope where there is none? Is she leading me on? She cannot even look or talk to me at work. Well, how would she be leading him on if she won't even look or talk to him? Uh, I'm not sure where you're getting that from. I have told her being friends is not an option because I need to move on. Well, yeah, I wouldn't be friends with her either here. Um, but, I, you know, is he holding on to hope when there is none? I think if she genuinely thought that things would be different, she would give this another chance. Mm -hmm. I agree. I don't think that, I, I think she has feelings for him. It's not like that. I don't think she's not attracted to him mm -hmm. or has feelings. I think she's just thinking, we're not going to be able to work out. Look at how we've been. And unless you really do a lot of work, I agree with her. Mm -hmm. and, and that's on her as well. But you can only control you, right? So, I mean, if you stay committed to the personal growth, and I'm not really sure what you've done here, right? He didn't really get into that, did he? You can make changes but i i think it's going to take quite a bit here because of the way you guys were with each other mm -hmm. um it's not one of those issues that is easily fixed right and also the fact that it it reached a point where both of you were begging and pleading and so both of you reached that emotional vulnerability where you could be very hurt and it sounded like you were very hurt by each other's reaction so that in itself is going to take a lot of healing and processing mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, as far as holding on to hope when there is none, I, I think, like I said, she would consider this again in the future if, you know, you guys were both single and she really f felt like there was going to be a change. Mm -hmm. But you can't lie to yourself about the changes you're making. You know, it's like if you started going to the gym for two weeks, have you really changed? Mm -hmm. Right? Like, no, of course not. It takes time. You have to consistently go for an extended amount of time to really have changes at the gym. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with emotional changes and working through these emotional issues. It doesn't happen here and there by watching a video once in a while. Mm -hmm. Like, how are you going to implement that in real time? Or how are you going to be aware of these things that you're doing unconsciously uh, unless you really take a good hard look at yourself? 
Exactly. And breaking those patterns. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to do, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a a possibility for these two, Mm -hmm. as long as he really stays focused on the growth and breaking the dynamic that they had. Mm -hmm. I agree. And it does seem like there is a lot of love between both of them. I really wish that the story would have went that both were brave enough to share that love with each other. It sounded like there were a lot of fears holding them back. I definitely do think that there is a possibility for things to work. It sounds like you will still have some sort of interaction with her at work. I think you're doing the right thing by keeping things polite. Uh, by her not looking at you or able to talk with you, it sounds like there's still a lot of hurt there and that can take some time. Um, but yeah. I, I do think that it is something that can be worked through. Yeah, I do too. Uh, but she's, I think being thoughtful in this and thinking things through, like how would this work? With the dynamic that we have or had, how would this work? And, you know, it's going to take time. So don't pressure. Continue the growth and let things happen naturally. See if she starts talking with you more and then take it from there. Mm -hmm. That's what I would do for now. Exactly. And at some point, eventually, once that relationship does get to the point where you can talk about the breakup, expressing empathy is so huge. Absolutely. You really want to undo a lot of those effects of shaming her for her emotional vulnerability Mm -hmm. and do the opposite by saying, I see you, I empathize with you. I can try to put myself in your position and see how how it was like for you. And that that is so powerful. Absolutely. All right. So hopefully you found this one helpful. Of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, askcraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Victoria is now available for Skype coaching. Yes, and I'm excited to talk with you. Just click on her name on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.